Hi, today we're going to be looking at the Miniware MHP50, which is the newer, larger version of their little MHP30 preheater platform. Now, I say it's a preheater platform, it does actually go high enough that you can actually do a rework on here without needing any additional equipment, but I find it quite useful just as a preheating platform. And these are great if you do anything like uh, little LED boards with aluminium or copper PCBs. These are really handy for that kind of stuff, just for doing small PCBs. Or if you're working in a small area on a larger PCB, it can be handy just to heat up that area. And then you can use a hot air station around the top to get the component off. So this one is, as the name suggests with the 50, a 50 by 50 millimeter hot plate. It's got this silicone protector over the top. And then it's got the hot plate just there. And this one is quite a bit more powerful than the MHP30. So with the latest version of firmware, you can actually run it with a USB-C input up to 150 watts. And if your USB power supply is capable, uh, then it can run all the way up to a 24 volt supply using that USB-C cable. You can also power it with the DC jack in the same way, so up to 24 volts to get the maximum 150 watts out. But if your power supply doesn't support it, then I believe you can set some different modes on here to effectively limit the amount of power that's drawn by the hot plate and then it, obviously it will take a little bit longer to heat up. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay who offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your project including PCBs from very low cost prototype boards to more advanced PCBs all the way up to 60 layers and also with specialist FR4 materials. You can also get your rigid flex PCBs made if you want to make something a little bit more interesting. They also offer a wide range of PCB assembly options. That means getting your PCBs assembled with components on there on both sides of the board, whether they be surface mount or through hole parts. And they also offer some mechanical services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication. And also when you're making something with a little bit higher volume, you can also get some injection molding done here. So don't forget to visit PCBWay.com. So new for the MHP50, we've actually got a little colour LCD. It's 160 by 80 pixels. And most of the previous miniware equipment have one of these little OLEDs, but the colour display does actually add quite a lot and makes the whole thing look a lot nicer. So there's a few different ways that you can use the device. You can use it as a reflow plate where the plate actually follows a reflow profile. You can just use it as a hot plate if you want to preheat a PCB so you can just set it to a specific temperature. Um, we've got the menu and then we've got some information about the device. So if we click on information, uh, we've got some details about the hot plate. So for example, it's saying the resistance at the moment is 4.1 ohms, 21 degrees C. And there are some interchangeable hot plates that you can get for this. This one has the standard aluminium one, but I believe there are a few different types of hot plate that you can plug into here for different reasons. Um, it does have a fan in there as well to help cool it down a bit quicker. Now, I've got this connected to a... USB-C power delivery power supply and actually it seems to be able to run this at 28 volts so we should get the maximum heating power and fastest heat up times from this device. Uh, it's got the temperature of the microcontroller and then the software and the hardware versions. Then if we go through to menu this is where we've got all of the settings so we've got some presets here to allow us to quickly set the temperature of the hot plates but you can adjust it when you're heating just with the up and down buttons here. Uh, we've got some timers like shutdown timers. Uh, we can adjust the backlight of the LCD. We can also get it to turn off it, if it detects that the device has tilted past a certain angle. So a bit of safety there, which is quite nice. Uh, the volume of the beeper. Temperature unit, so degrees C or degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we can set limits on the power. So this is if you've got an underpowered uh, USB power supply. You can actually set a limit, for example... You can set it to 60 watts if your power supply is only capable of that. Um, it does time out quite quickly from the menu, which can be a little bit annoying. Uh, same with the DC jack. You can set the maximum power from there. We can do a temperature calibration, and then you can set the reflow profiles here. And then finally, you can restore it to factory defaults. Now, it's taken me a long time to get around to reviewing this because the power supplies that I had weren't actually capable of driving this properly, and I wanted to test it with the USB-C power supplies. So what I'm using it with today is this Ugreen 300 watt USB power supply, which is really quite a powerful unit. It's capable of 140 watts into one of the USB-C ports here. 
which should be able to drive this pretty much as close to maximum as possible. And you've seen that it's able to run it at 28 volts. Uh, these are actually extremely expensive, but I managed to get mine on a good deal. But certainly if you're wanting to use this at maximum power and want to heat it up as quick as possible, you are going to need something like this or a power supply that can plug into the DC jack. Next we'll heat up the hot plate and see how long it takes for it to reach temperature and we'll also have a look how even the heating is on the hot plate. So we're in heat just here so you can press this button and we can start heating up and we can see already that's drawing about 150 watts from the USB power supply and it's heating up quite nicely. We've got a fairly consistent 140 to 150 watts, but with the occasional dropout, I'm not 100% sure what that's about. And there we go. We're pretty much at temperature there in about 1 minute 30 or so. So that's how long it takes to heat with a maximum power USB power supply. The heating is fairly even. There's a little bit of a hot spot just to the side. But overall, it's pretty even, and you'd expect that with an aluminium hot plate we shouldn't really get too much in the way of hot spots. The thermal camera is showing just a couple of degrees difference across the surface of the hot plate but overall the calibration looks pretty much spot on. You can see we've got it set to 220 and on the thermal camera we're reading about 220 to 222 degrees. Now when you finish with the hot plate you can press the button here to take you back to the menu and that means that the hot plate starts cooling down. But um, although it does have an LED to indicate that the hot plate is hot and this LED changes colour depending on the temperature and there is a little warning symbol just there to say the hot plate is hot, I think it would be quite nice if it actually showed you what the temperature of the hot plate was when it's back in this menu because you've got no real idea at this point what the temperature is and whether it's safe to touch. Next let's have a look at the reflow profile. So if we go into menu and then we go to reflow just here. What we've got is a three-part curve for roughly fo following a reflow profile. So three sections, A, B, and C, and we've got the time and temperature for each of those. So rise time, rise temperature, keep temperature and keep time, which is basically the soak period for the flux to actually do its action, and then weld temperature and weld time, which is presumably reflow. And if we go into any of these, so for example, we're going to weld time, it says it's going to sit there for about 80 seconds. And if we go up one to the temperature, that's 230 degrees C. So this is pretty much set up for lead solder. And you can adjust that for any of those three sections. So close enough to follow a reflow profile. Obviously not quite as much granularity as a reflow oven. But this can be quite important because rather than just setting the plate to 250 degrees C and then sticking your PCB on top and reflowing it that way, by following the profile what you'll do is you'll activate the flux at the right time. And what that does is you'll find it draws in some of the beads of solder, but also allows the flux to operate properly. And it means that you won't end up with solder beads all over your PCB, and you'll get much better results when you're soldering uh, components with quite small pitch legs. So let's see what happens when we actually run this. So we'll go to reflow. And we'll start it off and basically it should try and follow that curve. And for some reason we failed there. Let's try that again. And now we're getting an over temperature in that section. So we might have to let it cool. Let's see if we can run it again once it's cooled down. So it looks like after it's finished the reflow profile, it just carries on plotting data as the hot plate cools down. 
Now I'm not sure what happened before but it did manage to follow the reflow profile quite accurately. This is a beta version of firmware so perhaps there's still a few little bugs left in it but that was how the reflow profile works. So as I mentioned, one of the things that I really like these little hot plates for is working with high power LED boards, for example. And uh, what we've got here is a copper based PCB for some Cree XHP50 LEDs. And you get boards like these with the copper base made at suppliers like PCB way, but they're really handy to just reflow on a little hot plate like this. And this is where the low profile nature of the MHP50 really comes in because even the MHP30 was really quite high up off the bench and it meant that if you needed to tweak the position of anything you were already quite high off the bench this one's a lot lower profile and a lot easier to work with and then if we went to something like the large hot plate that I've got that one's so far off the bench and you end up burning your hands if you're trying to adjust the position of any components on the board so this is really nice for small boards and as I mentioned also if you did want to rework just a portion of a larger PCB for preheating purposes you can do that uh, with one of these little hot plates but let's solder up these leds and see if we can use the profile feature to reflow the solder So that reflowed those boards really nicely but do plan how you're going to get your PCBs off the hot plate because unlike a reflow oven there's no rapid cool down or anything like that so you do have to move the PCBs while they're still hot and if you knock them or drop them you're going to lose some of the components off the PCB so just take care with that. So let's take a look at the construction of the device so just like the MHP30 the top is unpluggable and you can swap this out for different versions or a replacement if the heater burns out. And it looks like the heater is simply a resistor. So we can see the two wires going into the top part here. And then we can also see the thermocouple wire going into the top here. So just some 0.1 inch headers basically that just plug in to the bottom of the unit. And then we've got the fan here. Now I think that is for cooling, but you can't really hear it running. It's very quiet and I don't really notice much airflow even when the menu item says it's spinning. Uh, but yeah, I'm assuming that's just to help cool it down. And then let's take a look inside. So with the bottom cover removed, there's just four screws there. We can see the bottom side of the PCB. And I don't think there'll actually be much in this unit. Probably just the processor for driving the display and running the system. A switching MOSFET for turning the heater on and off. And maybe a little bit of power supply electronics and a USB-C controller for the power delivery. So here's the top side of the PCB and we've got an interesting looking DC barrel jack. I struggle to find DC barrel jacks that have a high current carrying capability but you can see this one is really designed for the job. Uh, let me know if you know what that part number is for one of these because that one looks pretty good. Uh, but really we've just got some power electronics here for driving the heater on the connections over here. We've got a little bit of analog electronics around this connector. This is for the thermocouple measurements. We've got the beeper. We've got the WCH microcontroller. It's a CH32F208. And this one's a Cortex M3. And it looks like we've got a Bluetooth antenna as well. Although I don't recall anything about connectivity on this particular device, but maybe they've added that in for any future firmware revisions. And then we've got the firmware stored on a bit of flash here. But uh, overall, quite a nicely designed PCB. And everything all looks uh, good as we'd expect. So that's a quick look at the Miniware MHP50 Mini Hot Plate. And overall it seems to work quite nicely. Now bear in mind if you have a lower powered USB power supply it won't heat up quite as quick as it has in this video here. And it may struggle to follow the reflow profiles because it does need that extra power to ramp up the temperatures quickly. But certainly that doesn't diminish your ability to reflow electronics on this little hot plate. Uh, now I have noticed one or two little bugs with the firmware but as I said this is a beta version of the firmware so I expect in the next public release that all of those types of bugs will be fixed. Overall it works quite nicely but it is quite expensive as with most miniware equipment 
uh, partly because it's built very nicely. So the whole thing is made from metal, apart from the bottom, which is a plastic plate. Um, but you could buy a much bigger hot plate for less money than the MHP 50. But if you do mobile phone type work, this is a really nice form factor to work just on areas of the board. And because it's very low profile compared to some of the other hot plate heaters, uh, it's a lot easier to work with tweezers and that kind of stuff if you're working on the bench and you want to remove parts or use a hot air station along with this as a preheating station. But anyway, I hope you found the video useful. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to visit the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. And until next time, thanks for watching.